Disc brakes are all slightly different depending on the brand and the model, but they all work on the same principle. If your brake lever with a master cylinder that pushes hydraulic fluid through a hose down to that caliper, and that pushes the pistons and the brake pads onto your rotor. So first thing to check really is simply the feel of the brake. So pull your brake lever in, it should feel nice and solid when it contacts, so your brakes are getting pushed into, that, into the rotor, but also it should feel consistent. Every time you pull that lever, it should feel the same. As you can see with my brake, the first time I pull it in, the blade almost touches the grip, but once I've pulled it a few times, it doesn't come in as far, which is a sign that actually it's time for me to get working on this bike and bleed that brake. So let's check the actual condition of the components as well. So starting up at the brake lever, just have a look at it. The lever should be nice and straight, no friction in that lever blade. You can pull this cover off and just check there's no oil under there. You know, these things don't come loose, but if you've hit that brake lever or you've had a crash, you may have knocked that banjo bolt and then that's gonna start leaking a bit of oil. So just check, run your finger over it. You shouldn't feel anything wet on that. Also on your lever, there'll be somewhere to put oil in. Or on my Shimano brakes, there's this bleed screw on the top. Some brands just have a cover on top, but make sure they're tight so there's no oil leaking from around them. Some bikes have internal routing for hoses and cables. This Scott does, and that goes in the head tube here. So once the hose is inside the frame, there really shouldn't be any chance of damaging it. However, actually you can see on mine that I've got a slight kink in that rear brake hose and that's been being a little bit careless when I've packed this bike into a bag to travel. So something that I need to keep an eye on and if that gets any worse, there's a chance of oil coming out of there and losing the power from that bat brake. So I might want to think about replacing this hose maybe in the future. So now we've worked our way down to the brake caliper. First thing I'll do is check these two bolts holding your caliper on. Make sure they're nice and tight. On the rear, they tend to come loose more often than they do on the front, but definitely keep an eye on that, especially if you're riding somewhere that's really rough, lots of heavy braking. Also, with that caliper, you'll feel any friction that's in those pistons on the brake lever. So if that brake lever is really hard to pull, or maybe it doesn't return nice and quickly, that could actually be caused by the pistons in this caliper not returning back. Something you sometimes see on older brakes where the pistons get mucked up and worn and I'll actually stick in and that's something you'll feel in the brake lever. Also, the thing to check here is brake pads. So however you need to, just take those brake pads and give them a visual check over. Okay, so brake pads are out. You should have two pads and that little spring retaining clip. What you see is that clip goes around the side of that braking surface. So one thing I check is the depth of that braking pad surface compared to this spring when your pads wear out, they'll wear all the way down until this spring actually touches the disc and you'll hear that and it'll feel horrible because it's metal on metal. So you need to replace the brake pads before they get that low. Also, I'm checking for any oil or any sort of moisture on that pad. They should be totally dry. With the brake pads out of the caliper, now is a good time to have a look down there and see what's going on. I can see that both my pistons are slightly out of the caliper a little bit. That's because my brake pads have worn slightly and the, the pistons just adjust themselves. But what you really need to look for is that they're e equal on both sides. Occasionally you might find older disc brakes that one piston might get stuck a little bit. That means that that one's staying there and the other piston is doing all the work. So you need to make sure that both pistons are moving equally. And the best way of doing that is just by looking down inside that caliper and you should see that they're equal space into the side of the caliper. So the signs that maybe you have got oil on those brake pads are, firstly, your brakes aren't going to work very well. Secondly, you can get a sort of howl from oil on those pads. Quite often that happens on the rear where people spray oil onto their chain. So be aware that that might be a cause of those disc brakes howling. Uh, if that is the case, then you need to get rid of that oil somehow or change those pads. Now on to the disc or rotor as they're called. First thing I would do is check the bolts. Some of them are six bolts into the hub. This one's a center lock, so just make sure that's nice and tight. And then you can just spin that wheel. And what I'm looking for is this disc brake in the caliper. I'm looking straight down the disc and I can see the brake pads and I can see the rotors running nice and sweet through the middle. 
Also, you're just checking that your wheel spins freely. If it stops straight away, then that's a surefire sign that your disc is warped and you're gonna have to do something straight and out. But I can look right down there and I can see I've got a tiny bit of movement in that disc as it just goes into the caliper. That's something you can fix quite easily normally, just by using an adjustable spanner, or even if you don't have one of those, just trying to pull the discs. They're, they're slightly sort of malleable, you can pull them and push them a little bit. If it's too far gone, then you might find that's not going to work and it's time to replace that rotor. So that's it for checking your brakes. Really, the feel of the brake tells you a lot about if there's any issues with the system. And then it's just a visual check of the hoses and just spin your wheels so that you can check the disc brakes. They sometimes get damaged by riding into rocks or in transit or anything like that. And there's nothing better than a nice free spinning wheel. We've actually done a video on how to stop your brakes from squealing. So if yours are squealing, click up here for that one. That could be a few different issues, like maybe your disc is slightly bent or you've got some oil on those brake pads. Or for more videos from GMBN, you can click down here for our maintenance playlist. Or click on me and my bike to subscribe to GMBN.